In this problem, we're asked to find the end behavior of the function graphed above. More specifically, the first part asks for the right-hand end behavior. So what that means when you're asked to find the right-hand end behavior would be, what happens to the y values of the points on the graph if you trace along the curve and look at the x values of the points? So I've graphed a similar equation. I didn't try to emulate this exact graph, but I, I gave a graph uh, here on Desmos.com that has the same end behavior. So if I was to pick any point, even if I was to pick a point on the left, the right-hand end behavior means what happens to the points as you trace to the right, but we're going to do this process forever. So what happens at first is actually irrelevant. Uh, what happens at first right now is I have a negative x value and a positive y, but that's going to change when it, as I move from different quadrants. But there's going to eventually reach a point for which I'm going to be stuck in quadrant 4. So as soon as I get here and I trace to the right forever, what happens is I trace to the right, the graph goes down forever, and we just want to tell people that. We want to be able to say in terms of numbers that as you go way to the right, the graph goes down. So in terms of x's and y's, what you see is once you get past this point here, because you're in quadrant four, your x values are going to be positive and your y values are always going to be negative, but this process of tracing never ends, so it deals with infinity. So as you look at my x value, it's 3.5. As I trace to the right, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, but it's always positive. And my y values, I like to say, get bigger in the negative direction. So right now it's negative 2.44. As I trace to the right, I'm also going down. So there's actually two things happening. My x values are going to, you know, to the right, and my y values are going down uh, at the same time. So my x values are getting bigger and bigger, but positive. And my y values seem to be, at least in magnitude, they're going 2.3, 2.7. They'll go 3, 4, 5 forever, but they're negative. So I like to say they're getting bigger in the negative directions. Uh, direction. So when mathematicians go back now and we want to communicate that to each other using uh, notation, uh, what that looks like is we like to say is x gets big in the positive direction because they're tracing to the right and movement to the right on the real number line. Uh, gets you to the positive x values, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. We call that infinity. Uh, one easy way to get infinity is to use two lowercase o's. If you see a little yellow box pop up, it's called MathQuill. You can click on it, and you can click on the infinity symbol as well. That works too. Uh, so what happened again as x went to infinity? As we traced to the right, our points were stuck in quadrant 4, and x values were positive, and the y values were always negative. But the process never ended, so we say that the y values... Uh, approached negative infinity. It's kind of a, a dangerous word to use, approaches, because you don't get closer to infinity, but this is the notation we use. As x goes in the positive infinite direction, f of x will get big negative, meaning it'll, the y values uh, are getting bigger and bigger in magnitude, but they're negative. Basically just means the graph is going down. The left-hand end behavior would be pretty much the same explanation, except you're tracing to the left. So it's going to happen eventually. In the short term, you're going to be moving from quadrant 4 to 1 to 3, that over to 2. But once you get into quadrant 2, you're going to be stuck there forever if you trace to the left. Because if, if you look at x values going to the left, the corresponding y values of the graph are going to be going up in the positive direction. So as you go to the left, as x goes to negative infinity, your y values are going to approach positive infinity. We don't care what happens over this finite region right here. The end behavior is just that, discusses what happens at the ends. So even if you were to start here, you'd see that you know x is positive, y is negative, etc. And that's going to change as you move through the different quadrants. But eventually, you're going to go far enough past that finite point right there. Eventually, once you reach that finite point right there, you are going to have a negative x value and a positive y value forever as you trace to the left, and they just get bigger and bigger in both directions. So as x gets negative, uh, as, as I should say, as x gets big in magnitude but in the negative direction, your y values get bigger and bigger in the positive direction. So we say as x approaches negative infinity, y will approach positive infinity. So I'm going to go back here and I would write uh, and this would always be the case, the left-hand end behavior, the very question means what's happening as x uh, approaches negative infinity. I'm going to use two lowercase o's. Don't use capital O's and don't use zeros. Use two lowercase o's. And what happened is we went to the left, the graph went up forever. So the y values uh, approached positive infinity. Now, just to do another quick example, uh, maybe with a little exp less explanation, if I was to switch my graph here, uh, to something else. I just typed in these functions over here. Uh, if I switch it over here to the blue graph, I'd have a different end behavior. And this time, because I have a different graph, the results would have came out differently, meaning on this time, uh, as x goes to positive infinity, the y values don't approach negative infinity, the graph goes up to the right. 
whereas on my last graph it went down when you went to the right. So this graph, if you go to the right, it goes up, so x and y are both approaching positive infinity. And if you go to the left, x would be approaching negative infinity, but the graph goes down this time. So as I go to the left forever, the graph goes down forever, and we say as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to po excuse me negative infinity. And you actually could just look at the signs on the, the x and the y values to tell this, and they just realize it's an infinite process. So right there, you can see that my x value is negative, my y value is negative, and that's going to stay the case forever if I keep tracing to the left.